Okay, hi Mike and Rebecca, you just presented a paper on um, innovating pedagogy at a massive scale. Uh, I thought it was very interesting. Maybe you'd like to give us some highlights from that paper. Okay, well the paper um, is about how can you scale up pedagogies to a huge scale, and by that we mean tens or hundreds of thousands of people. And there are some forms of teaching and learning that just don't scale, like say sports coaching. There are some that are pretty impervious to scale, like lecturing. So you can lecture to 10 people or 10,000 people, and it's much the same experience. So what are the pedagogies that really get benefit from massive scale? So that's what the paper was about. Um, and we talked about the FutureLearn platform, where we try to integrate massive scale pedagogy into the design of the platform. And in particular, we based it on the PASC Lorillard conversational model, where each piece of content is associated with an active conversation where people can share their perspectives. And <clears throat> the more people there are, the more perspectives you get, the more different viewpoints you get. You need to structure that. You need to provide ways to mentor it, so to allow the more expert people to mentor the less expert people and you need to provide ways to find the most interesting comments and to so that was the theoretical basis for the paper and and how much of that is specific to future learn how much of it is is more generic in the sense that i could apply similar principles in other uh, platforms of scale the conversational framework could be applied to any platform at scale but what you've got to think about is how you operationalize it, how you make it work in practice. So, for example, aligning conversations with content, providing ways to converse about the um, base activities that you're doing, such as the models, the content, but also conversations at a higher level. So conversations about your understanding, your theoretical perspective. Mm -hmm. So you could apply it in a whole set of um, areas. And that's just one pedagogy, the conversation model that will scale. I think the more uh, you know, equally interesting question is what other pedagogies will scale? Will game-based learning scale? Will inquiry-based learning scale? And I think the answer to all of these is yes, but you've got to find the right way to operationalize it, to put it onto a platform so that it works at scale. Now, you, you gave some examples of how certain designs of, of user experience don't really scale up. For instance, the standard uh, discussion forms that we get in, in VLEs aren't built for that you know, for massive, right? Yeah, they're built for commentary on a course as a whole. Um, and the problem with that is that they're not linked into context. Mm -hmm. um, what we try to do is not to replace forums, but to provide a different way of conversing <laughs> alongside the context. So it's very easy to see the flow of conversations, much more like a water cooler conversation. It's easy to see the flow of conversations and then to add your commentary on it. The difficulty is that you can get tens of thousands of these. And so if you just see it as something that you have to understand as a whole, it's not going to work. If you just see it as something that you contribute to the flow, it's rather like the conference here. You know, there are tens of thousands of conversations in this conference. We can't participate in them all, but we can take part in the flow, and we can also share the highlights. So that's the sort of thing we try to do with future learning. And then Rebecca was looking at how that plays out in practice. I think you started with, in a way, asking why bother with scale at all, right? What are the benefits? And well, exactly, because we thought about pedagogy of massive and obviously we thought about that for a long time because um, that went alongside the platform design for future learn the pedagogy was embedded within it but then we thought well past the headlines past the things about oh we've got 100,000 people on our moves what are the benefits why would you want to learn with 100,000 other people so that was where our research took us next to looking at all the MOOCs which had been run on FutureLearn up to that point, and up to that point it was about 18. We looked at their course content, we looked at the conversations that were happening around them, we looked at the course emails, and we took a grounded approach to, well, why, why is, is Massive good? Why is Massive bad? What can we do about it? So we came up with a series of advantages for learners. So for learners, you've got extra support from other 
learners. You've got resources, um, not only the conversational resources, but the URLs and the links they post, the things that they uh, put up online specifically for the course. And you get different cultural perspectives as people approach the same sort of issues and content from around the world. And they, they all have different takes on it. So lots of benefits for learners. We found for educators, um, it, it really brought out an excitement and a passion a lot of educators um, where they, possibly, they might have a fairly obscure research interest that lots of people wouldn't know about. And suddenly they've got thousands of people who are interested in talking about it, learning about it. Um, and also for educators, it gave them access sometimes to more resources. So they could go and approach people and say, I've got 50,000 learners on my course. Will you be interviewed? Will you provide some content? And because of the scale, people were interested in doing that. Um, so we got those benefits for learners, educators, but we also found benefits for society. So the benefits of widening higher education to people, of um, creating a global impact, of bringing people in from around the world, um, and of developing tools and resources and professional practice on a, on a really big scale. You had some examples of actually rapid change of professional practice like in dentistry in the uh, in uk um teaching of pro of uh, computing and maybe you want to pick up on one of those examples yeah so one of the examples we've got is in england recently they changed the national curriculum for primary schools and they said every child should learn programming but of course primary school teachers can't all program or teach programming um, so we had a MOOC on Future Learn, which was aimed at teachers about teaching programming. So that brought on board thousands of teachers. Then those thousands of teachers could go back to their staff room, share what they'd learnt, um, share the resources. So very quickly, cascading a change in professional practice across the country. And, and we saw that as a very positive thing to do. Thank you. And of course, the, the paper is available on, on Oro and the slide set on SlideShare, right? So everybody can uh, read uh, yes. in further detail. Yes, if you go and look for innovative pedagogy at massive scale on SlideShare, you can find it or on Open Research Online, it's up there as well. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.